Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be continuing our session in uh, machine learning. Today we're going to be looking at support vector machine. What is support vector machine? Support vector machine is a very interesting algorithm that you can use to do classification and regression. I've been doing regression all this while using the linear regression model from SQLearn. Today we're going to be using support vector machine to try out some classification uh, problem using a famous data known as the Iris data set. Uh, to get going, I'm gonna quickly share my screen. Who is playing that music? Uh, Divine. So I'm gonna quickly share my screen so that we can take a look at this. Okay. So this is our website where we are picking our lectures from. I'm gonna quickly click on the blog. Let's get to today's class. Website is thickclassify.com. So once I click on blog, I'm gonna scroll down. We have different courses that we are treating. React, Node, Django. This is what we treated this morning. Machine learning, this is where we are. So I'm clicking on machine learning. Uh, so that it's gonna take me to where I should be, okay? So this is where I should be. All these, we've done all this. Uh, since the start of our class. So please, you can get to our website, tclassify.com, check out what we've done so far. I would say, uh, so these are the things we studied. We use this for regression. We have assignments attached. If you want to try out the assignments. Uh, but today, which is a wonderful day, we're going to be looking at support vector machine. This is what we're looking at. So what is this support vector machine? Uh, support vector machine, also known as support vector network, a supervised learning model. So it's a very wonderful model that you can, with associated learning algorithm that analyze that are used for classification and regression. Those are where you can use it, classification and regression. You can see this, this is from Wikipedia. Once you search for support vector machine on Google, you can see this reference. So this very support vector, uh, this support vector machine model was developed by ATN and Bell Laboratories by Vapnik with his colleagues. So it presents the most robust prediction method. Until the advent of deep learning, support vector machine used to be the most famous uh, model, uh, model for machine learning analysis. And today we're gonna be practicing using this for support vector machine. Now, what problem are we going to be looking at? We're going to be looking at the Iris data set. We're going to be importing it. So these are the first thing we did. We imported what? Pandas as PD. Then from sqlearn.data site, we imported Iris data set. The data that we've been using so far is either that it's in uh, Excel, isn't it? We save our C uh, CSV and import using what? Pandas read CSV, isn't it? But this one, this data is so popular that it came with this SQLM model um, library or SQLM uh, Python model. That's why you can get it in by simply saying from SQLM.data site, import load underscore iris. That's the data site. So with that, you can now, with this very uh, function, you can load in your iris data set. So let's practice this immediately. How do we do that? You click on your search and type in what Jupyter Notebook. Click on your Jupyter Notebook, it will be opened. So once you click on search like this, type in what Jupyter Notebook, which you already installed. I already told us how to install this. So click on this Jupyter Notebook. Once you click on it, it's going to open up. It will open up to this. So once you have this opened up, what do you do? You go to this new, isn't it? The arrow beside the new, click. I click on Python 3, that's the kernel we are using to run our machine, uh, our, to interpret our machine learning codes. So do that and open up your Jupyter Notebook and let's start coding this out. So this one is gonna take, uh, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult than the ones we did yesterday and day before yesterday, but just uh, keep paying attention. If you don't grab it at once, you're gonna grab it later. So that's one thing with uh, coding. At the first teaching, it might look very distant to you, but with time, it becomes easier. 
Okay. So I'm gonna import pandas and load iris. We need these two, very important. So what do I do first? Once I open my Jupyter notebook, first thing will be to give it a title, isn't it? So what title am I giving this one? Let me say support vector, support vector machine. And what data am I studying? Iris. Okay, let me just leave it at Iris. Iris data set. So I click on rename. Once I do that, you see that the name of my Jupyter notebook is now support vector machine Iris. So next thing would be to import Pandas as PD and to import load Iris from SQLN dot datasets. So those are the two things I'm going to import. So I'm going to click on run. So once you click on run, the interpreter is going to do this too for you. So what's the next thing to do? You get back to our website. Next one will be to load these uh, Iris data set. Like I said, the Iris data set, it came in with the SQLN. Makes it easy for you to use it so that you don't need to read CSV. Okay, so load it. So you just take the steps one after the other as it is here. Yeah? Then you'll be cool with what you've done. So let me take the next step. So I hope we are getting the steps. We imported what? Pandas as what? PD. Who can tell me why we needed pandas? Our data frame, isn't it? To manipulate our data, that's why we need pandas. Who can tell me why we got in SQLN or data sites? Why do we need SQLN? Okay, from the load iris, when we say iris dot features underscore name, you're simply asking it, what are the features? What are the column headers? You understand? You know, in the other one, we had what? Area. After area, we have our prices, bedroom and all those things. You understand? So for this very one, what you are going to have in the as the first column is what? Separate length. The second one is what? Separate width. The third one is better length and the fourth one is what petal width those are the features that you're going to use to predict to know whether this very uh flower is iris setosa or the other uh there are three classes of them but these are what we'll be checking just like in the first one we needed to check the area of the house the number of bedrooms of the house and the what and the age of the house in order to determine the what in order to determine the what price to determine the price we checked what the area number of rooms and what the year isn't it the age this one in order to determine whether this is iris setosa or any class you understand we need to check the what the separate length so what scientists did was that they went into the farm or they went into the uh, flowering place you understand where they have their i don't know what they call it floriculture or anything you understand when they see this iris plant, they will use ruler and measure the length of the petal and the, the sepal width. Is that clear? They took all this data with their plan sheet. Is that clear? Then they came to their computer, recorded them into where? Excel, isn't it? Or any data, any spreadsheet they are using. Then saved it as CSV. Then modified it and uploaded it to this uh, sklearn.dataset. And that's why you can reference it from there. Do we understand what features name means? Feature simply means those attributes you're looking at in order to classify. Are we, are we understanding? So those are the attributes and they are all in CM. They are all in what? They are all in what? So we'll go back now. So let's check out the target name. Now, when you talk about target name, what does target name mean, class? Target name simply means now that you've looked at the separate width, the separate length, the sepal width, the petal length, and the petal width. If you look at them, what are you classifying them into? There are three classes. So we want to look at those three classes that you can classify in them to, depending on the values of their 
sepal length and width. You can now classify as what, whether it's iris setosa, or whether it's iris vasicolor, or whether it's iris verdinica. Is that clear? Computer is able to now look at, once you now feed a computer with any uh, measurements for sepal length, sepal width, le uh, petal length and petal width of any given flower, computer should be able to tell you that, guy, yeah, this is iris setosa. You understand? Please, this is iris vesicular. This is iris virginica. So using the features, you're able to determine the target. Are we understanding what we are doing? So we've done that. Let's get back. So the next thing now will be to do what? Uh, I've done that. To arrange them in the uh, data frame, pandas data frame. Let's do that. You can see the codes are very clean. But you guys, you know, did you guys notice one thing? The course now, the way I, I, I present it on the deck on the on my website now. You don't need to modify anything. Is that clear? So you see that we are, I'm improving. Just so am I improving? Am I trying? I don't want to give Ibrahim too much headache uh, working on my codes now. That's why I try to clean it up now. Hmm? So Casper, I'll give you people the secret. Huh? Once you want to put in the code in the back end, you understand? Click on code. You understand? Once you click on code, it will paste exactly the way it should be there. So that we don't need to go and be arranging our single quotes and double quotes. Uh, did we understand what just happened now? Please be paying attention. This one is actually easier. It looks like it's more difficult, but it's actually easier because the Python statements, they are very simple. DF. DF is a variable. DF is a what? You are just assigning this value to this variable. So how do you come about this value? You're using pandas, which is a model, isn't it? Why? How do you know that you're using pandas? Because you say PD. And we know that we imported pandas as what? PD. So we're using pandas. What are we using in the pandas? Is data frame. Data frame simply means something that can arrange something in table. Can you see that table down there? It can fetch this data the way it is, whether it's in JSON format or in any format. Arrange it in tabular form. Or if you read it as CSV, you understand? Convert it to this tabular form and present it to you on the Jupyter Notebook. That's what pandas can do. So it's using this function of pandas to do what? So look at this iris.data, which is the data. So look at the what? Iris.data, which is the data that they've collected, transformed, and you imported. Is that clear? After getting this data, it's you simply arrange it in columns. Is you simply do what? Arrange it in columns. So what is what column is he looking at to arrange this? He's looking at iris.features underscore name. And we already know that iris.features underscore name is the what? Sepalent, petals, and all those things. And that's why he's able to arrange it according to this. Class is that clear? Class is that clear? So after arranging it in this table, when you say df.head, class, df.head, what is the meaning of df.head? df.head simply means show all the first five rules. Show us the first word. Show us the first word. That's what dot head means. If you say only df, what will happen? Who can tell me what will happen? We've been saying df since I will be seeing what, what will happen when you say df. Huh? Let somebody tell me what will happen if you say only df now. You people should stop dulling me. We've been saying df in the previous ones. Is it this one that we started df.head? It will show everything. Thank you, Kasmir. You people should be thinking. <laughs> so let me try it. Let me remove all these dots head and read on. Can't you see it's showing everything now? It's showing everything. You see that the data is up to how many? 150 rules. It's even uh, taking out some in order to, for you to enter. Can you see this dot dot? This dot dot simply means that there are plenty things there. So let me get back to dot head. I told you guys that this thing is very simple, but it's just that you have to take it easy. You have to do what? Take it easy. Who can tell me why it's uh, okay? Is it okay? No, you I'm supposed to put uh, this, but okay. Are we clear on this? Can I continue? It's perfectly cool and simple. Okay, so let's continue. So once you say df.head, you see in this one, I showed you both the, the code and the answer is given, isn't it? makes it easier for you so that you can be seen when you are making mistakes, you can see your mistake. So I'm going to pick out. So if you're picking this out by yourself, which one are you picking out? Is it the in or the out? Class, is it the in or the out? The in, isn't it? When you click on the run, the out comes out. 
You see, that's why you guys are preparing for this competition. Because I know that by next week, Casmir uh, should be able to write this post from his head. Have you? Kasmir, you're going to be writing this thing from your head by next week. Have you? But we can, I trust you. I don't, I'm not doubting it. I trust you to write it from your head. Uh, after all this work we are doing, we are going to be start coding this thing physically, not pasting. No, don't be pasting too much. Except when you've understood it very well. That's when you paste. So very soon you start typing it out. So we're going to do DF target. DF simply means data frame, like I said, data frame equal to what? Iris.target. Target. So let's get the targets. Here we got the features. Is it not the features that we got here? The features determine the target, isn't it? You use features to predict the target. That's the essence. So let's get out what our targets are. <laughs> so now we're having our features and we're having these targets. So these targets, I want us to notice something. Class, are we listening now? You can you see that we have only one target, eh? and all the targets are zero, zero. What options do we have? We have three options, but it could be Satosa, it could be what? Vesicular or Virginica, isn't it? That means it can be zero, it can be one, or it can be two. Class, do you understand this? If this target is one, what value will it be? What class of flower will it have been? If it's one, it would have been what? Vesicular, isn't it? If it was two, it would have been what? Virginica, isn't it? So to test this out, I'm going to, instead of having df.head, let me see the other ones so that I can see all of them and see what they are up to. So you can see that we have two here. Can you see two? So this two simply means what? Vesic, uh, Virginica, isn't it? One is Vesicolor, isn't it? So you see, once you say dot head, you simply want to get only the what? First five rows. First what? First five rows. So I'm going to take this out again. I'm going to have my head. When they say they don't want, they just want you to see how the data looks like, but they don't want to show you everything. So I'm going to go back. So you can see my first five. So you can see that this is almost like a complete table because you're having both the features and the target. Is that clear? Both the features and the target. You can be, instead of getting, hearing target, some people might use the word label, but some people might use the word what? Label, because you're classifying to the labels. Features are the data you're looking at to get your label. Are we together on that? You can be hearing the word label instead of target, so don't be confused. So what actually happens, who can tell me what happened in this code? Class, are you listening? Class, are you listening? This is the normal Python code. If you want to add an extra element to your, to your list, is that clear? You don't put what you want to be the label of the list, which is target, this target that is here, you understand? What do you want to be under the target? You want target, and you know, already know that iris.target simply uh, uh, text these, uh, this value, whether it's a total service color or the other ones, okay? So let's continue. So the next thing will be to what? Okay. Are we together? Who can explain what just happened now? Who is very fast to explain what just happened? What is this command doing? Basic color, thank you. That's what you're doing. You understand? <laughs> so from, from the output, you can easily decode what the code is, is trying to do. It's go, it, go, it goes to the data frame. You know we have data frame. Data frame simply contains all our data. You understand? Then it's not trying to tell it, give the target equal to equal to one. That it should just go to only where targets are equal to one. And we know that once target is equal to one, that is basic color. If target is equal to zero, it's what Satosa. If target is equal to two, it's what Vetinica. So it's telling it, please, I want you to get me the first five dot head. Simply means the first five rows. But I want it to be only for uh, basic color. Are we together on that? So if I change this thing to two now, class, see what you're going to see. If I turn it to two and run, we see only the target two, two. <laughs> I told you, Kasmer will be code, will code this thing for me by next week. It will be so simple for him. Once he has read, he will, he will have to read it again. You see that it's very, very simple. Okay, let's get back. 
So all the codes are on our website, very simple way. We did it like this because we want it to be simple for all our students, okay? You can see that the next instruction is simply telling it to get to get the targets at what two. And we target at two is what? Who can tell me? Bedinica, isn't it? So the target now is two. And this is the first five rows for this one, this target, okay? So what's the next thing we do? Uh, okay, let's do the next thing. The codes are not much for this. You're going to see it. So who can tell me what's the difference between us bringing in the data here and the ones we've done so far? I just explain it now. Who is sharp enough to re-explain it to me? The other one we used dot recs viva because we already had our data in our excel isn't it but now we just loaded because this data is coming from sklearn data science data sets so it's pretty much easier okay so this is what it just did now the data frame we already know the data frame isn't it the data frame is the data containing the words the features and the target now we want to add another another column another field is that clear I want to name that field flower underscore name. Can you see that field flower underscore name? Can you see it now? Now, what value, what value do we want to put under it? We want it to go to data target. Is that clear? When it goes to target, that it should be checking all of them one by one. That's what this uh, lambda, you understand? It's like a for loop. To be checking all of them one by one, you understand? Then anyone he sees, he check. If it is zero, assign it to Satosa. Ibrahim, I will understand this is if it is one that is the target, assign it to what? Versicolor. If it is two that is the target, assign it to what? Virginica. That's what it does. And that's why we are able to have this extra column. So it checks this. If uh, why is this Satosa Satosa here? Because all the targets that we are seeing here are what? They are what? They are what zeros. So if I remove this head to show all of them, you're gonna see that it will show for every of them. Can you see tools now? We are having Vedinica. So let me take it back to dot head. So you can see that this one is pretty easier, pretty easier to understand. So let's move forward to the next code. Okay. I hope I'm, I'm trying so hard to explain this one to the each line of code. Are we trying? Um, Ibrahim, are we doing well today? We're not running it uh, down the way we ran the first two. But I ran the first two down thinking that you people will look at it at second time and understand it. But this one, I'm picking it one by one. Okay. So who can tell me what happened? What happened is very clear now. Kasmir, tell me what happened. Oh, no, no. Kasmir, people at the back, they are understanding. Let me ask people in the front seat. Anselm, are you following? Can you tell me what just happened with DF, then inside block bracket, 45 by 55? What happened? Uh, Samuel, tell me what happened. Uh, okay, you know, uh, you don't, is it Excel that is also your problem? Okay. Please, you can tell me. Noah, can you tell me what happened? Uh, bro, can you tell me what happened? Uh, the author of you, can you tell me what happened? Oh, yeah, nah. So let me ask the people that are understanding what happened. People at the back, Kasmir or Joshua, I think oh, two of you understood what happened. Clearly. From 45 to 55, very simple. That's what he did. He checked the data frame. This is our data frame. This table is our data frame. Is that clear? Then he's picking out what? From 45 to what? 55, but not including 55, isn't it? From 45 to 55, but not including 55. That's how you bring it out. This, do you know what we have been doing so far? Who can tell me what we've been doing? We've not started the regression. If you did not do all these things, you'll still get your regression done well, your, your classification done well. You understand? But now we are learning pandas. We are doing what? You are learning pandas. That's what we've been doing. Somebody will ask you, do you know how to use panda? You say, no, you've not learned pandas. Or do you know how to use math plot lead? You say, no, you've not learned math plot lead. You understand? In an actual sense, I would have taught you pandas on his own, taught you math plot leap on his own. You understand? 
But instead of wasting all those time, and we know we are having targets of going for our hackathon, you understand? We now use pandas, we use math plot. You know that what we use math plot is to plot graph. Isn't it? We plot it with it. What do you need use uh, pandas for? To manipulate your table inside the Jupyter notebook, you understand? And arrange them. And that's what we've been doing so far. So that is what we've been, we'll be using pandas to manipulate our table. Once we get to the actual uh, uh, classification, Using the model, I will tell you that when we get to that place. Class, is that clear? Is that clear? So just so if they ask you, what do they use pandas for? You understand? These are what we can use pandas to do. We've already seen what we can use matplotlib to do, isn't it? Who can tell me why we did not import matplotlib in this class? Because we are not planning to plot. <laughs> oh my goodness. Now who can tell me why we did not import NumPy too? We are not planning to use that, you understand? But in the first class, we used it explicitly and we, 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 got, we got it as, as, as needed, okay? So let me continue. So what's the next thing I do? Uh, okay. So what we are doing so far is what? Using pandas. What we are doing so far is using what? Pandas to manipulate our data. Okay, so I do this uh, run. Okay, so let me continue. Okay, so you can see what happened here. In this line 14, we imported matplotlib the PLT as what? PLT, because at some point we might need to plot. And it's always good, it's always good that you import, uh, what's it called? It's always good that you import matplotlib. You understand? In fact, anytime when you go to competition and want to write out your, what's it called? Your machine learning code. You understand? Always import sklearn, import pandas, import matplotlib as plt or anything. Import your, import all those basic things that you need. Always do that. Okay. So let me import matplotlib as plt please as we are going now we'll explain the the one we just put no 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 it's a comment yeah it's a comment so just import only matplotlib dot pl pyplot as plt that's only that's the only one i imported okay this other one matplot inline I did not do that. Let me just check it out. So you can see from the statement, simply say map plot leap in line. Simply means that. Instead of importing it, importing it here, that we would have imported it. We did it in line when we were writing the code. Are we clear on that? Okay. So I take it out. Get back here. Run. So that's where I'm, I am still. Okay. So can we plot this? I will plot it out. So this is how we plot. We already know, we've already known about plotting before, have we? Have we tried plotting before? Huh? Kasmi, have you tried plotting? We've tried plotting. So let's put in this plotting code and explain it. Okay. So we have a, we have an error, but I'll check it out. But before that, let me explain this. PLT is our map, we reported map plot lib as PLT, we already know. So on the x-axis, we are putting what? Sepal length. On the y-axis, we are putting what? Sepal width. Then we did PLT dot uh, scatter, which is the scatter plot. So we are plotting the sepal length in CM, sepal width in CM, color green, marker plus, and another plot, Separate length, separate width, color blue. 
So those are what we are plotting. And this, uh, what happened here, are we looking at up here? What happened here is that we just created this variable, df0, df1, and df2, you understand? Then we went to the data frame and assigned the, from 0 to 50 to it. Then we assigned for df1, we assigned 50 to 100 data, you understand? Then for the uh, df2, we assigned uh, 100. So this is simply assigning. And these are where we use them actually. So what could have been our error? So it said out 17 line 5 in various sectors. So why are we having this error? Let me see. Line 5. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so uh, one of my students uh, helped me make corrections to the error. So let's get back and start immediately. Let's get back. The simple error, but I didn't notice it. As we are copying and pasting, I left something out, okay? So what I left out was, uh, let me quickly show you, in case if you're having the same error so that you can tidy it up. Uh, this is what I did. So when I picked this uh, in 17, I went and picked this uh, alongside this out 17. Okay, so I'm gonna, I want to show you what my error was so that you can make your correction. Okay, so what I did was that, the mistake I, I did was that I had this out 17 under here. So in this my line of code. So if you have it there, you click on run, you're gonna have this error. This is the error I was having. So one of my students told me now that I left out out 17, which I'm not supposed to have here because I'm picking it from our website. So I'm gonna remove it now. Once I remove it and run again, Pagam, you can see it's plotting. You can see our scatter plot. Can we see that? So we have this different from this. So once is uh is for this is green color. This other one is uh blue color. Okay, so let's continue. So I'm going to go back and uh, continue. So the next thing we need to feed is 18. So let me not make the same mistake again. I'm going to be very careful. So I want to make another plot. So I want to make plot. What we use to make plot? What one more do to we use to make plot? Math plot lead. I'm already already So I'm going to run this. Okay, you can see. You can see there is one classifier. Can you see the two major classes we have here? Two major classes are here. You understand? But it's supposed to be three classes. But this is showing you. We are using a mod plot list. In fact, we are spending more time now. We are spending more time now. Mod plot Mod plot list. We are spending more time on what? Spending more time on Now we are spending more time on what? Now we are spending more time on what? So these are the various ways that you can use the graph. You may not understand it now, but as you move forward, okay, so let's move forward. Okay, so let's move forward. Uh, let's move uh, forward. Let's move forward. Okay. So let's pick out this. Let's pick out this. Now, now, in our import, in our import, you see what we did. You see what we, we did. were doing. This class is different from. I mean, this class is different from. Please, am I sharing my screen? Please, am I sharing my screen? No. I'm not be sharing my screen all this while. Oh, it's not that I stopped. Just now, okay. Just now, okay. So, uh, the way we are doing this one is that we are doing what we call inline import. We are doing what we call what? Inline import. We are importing based on our input. Oh, we didn't have one only, but we imported and we started using it. So, we are going to make another import. We are going to make another import. And that is from SQLED. Dot model underscore selection. Import underscore text underscore text. Do you remember what we said about uh, it? Yeah, uh, 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 please we have the training data set. We have the training data set. Validation. Uh, yes, uh, so we want to train. We want to split it like the training data set. That's what we call it. Train underscore. Test 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 undersc
So we want to record this so that we can be able to explain this and do the new trend. So please, can you see my N50 is not supposed to be here so I take it out. 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 So I take now we can just do only pause. Yes. So I run this. So this has reported this uh thread underscore thread test plate because I'm gonna be using it. And I'm gotten it from where SK lens of model on the SK collection. So once I'm done having this, what am I gonna do? My exercise, what am I going to assign to my exercise? What do I assign to my exercise? What do I assign to my exercise? Yeah, you understand. Yeah. So this, um, so this, um, listen, so that you understand what happened here. Yes, Are you listening? You understand what happened here. Are you listening? Whenever you say DF dot, whenever you say DF dot, want to take out. You understand? DF is our data frame. We know that data frame contains all the things we've been saying, all the separate links and everything. You understand? Now we are telling it for our exercises. Now our new exercises. What I want you to do is to go to the data frame, which is DF. I want you to drop the following columns. I want you to do what? I want you to do what? The following column. So drop the target and the flower them. And you know that target and the flower them, they have to do something with something about the level, isn't it? Just want to focus on the features. The features are the X. Isn't it? The level of the target is the what? Y. That's why you say Y is equal to what? That's why you say Y is equal to what? Blah, blah, blah. X. And Y depends on X, isn't it? Y depends on X, isn't it? Target depends on the features. So we are going to drop this target and also what? So we are going to drop this target and also what? Flower them. So, and why so, you don't want to get started? So, you actually start to share and share it. I'm going to run this. Okay. So, I get back. Get back. So, with that uh, trend and test, I should be able to split my data to trend and test, which is the next step. Okay, let me do that. Okay, let me do that. So X underscore trend. X underscore test. Y underscore trend. Y underscore trend. So all these on the side, don't get yourself confused. These are just variables. These are just variables. And I told you that variables in Python, you can declare as many variables as you want together, isn't it? So using comma, exactly. So you have a variable known as x underscore trend. You have another variable, x underscore test, x, y underscore trend, y underscore trend, test. Those are variables, variables. So what are the values you are assigning to them? What are the values? And that is where it's important. So now we are using so now x underscore, s underscore, s underscore. Who can tell me where we brought this function? X underscore, x underscore, then underscore. Let me bring it in. Brought it in when we said what? From sqlearn dot model underscore selection. Import trend underscore, trend s underscore. Can you see that function? Why do why are we importing it? Because we want to use it on our data frame, isn't it? And we already know that we've assigned our data frame to part of our data frame to our x. And we assigned the other ones to our y. Exactly. So it's trying to tell us to go to these data frames that have been earlier allocated. Split it into what? X and Y. What? X and Y. Is that clear? And okay. assign it to these various uh, variables. So X, X we already know is so this X we already know. Y okay. we already know is this variable. Know. So the size of the test. Size of the test is going to be 0 0.2. This 0 0.2 simply means 0 0.2 simply means It simply means Go to the whole data. How many data do we have? How many data? 150 data. 150 data. Is it not? Go to this data. Take 20% of it as test. Then the rest of the 80% the rest of the 80% should be what? Training data. The rest of the 80% should be what? Training data. Class, are we together? So when we say X so trend, what do we mean? Class, what, what can you tell me about X trend? X trend simply means go to the features data frame. Is that clear? That eighty percent of it. Don't pick only one, 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 one. Pick only one. Pick only one. Eighty percent of it and make it X trend. What is X trend? 
the remaining 20% should be assigned as assistant. Is that clear? For white friends, go to the target, not the features again. Are we clear? Go to the target. 80% of what is on that target, assign it as white friends. And 20% of what is on that target, assign it as white friends. X test. That's what I want. My not make too much of a sense, of a sense, sense to, you to you now. But like I always like say, I always the time is going to make sense. Now we're going to use the basic function, a basic, a basic, a basic uh, uh, Python style function to so get the length. Let's, let's know the length. I'm always, I'm always, always sharing. sharing. Okay. okay. So let's get the length. Please look at me what this code does. X train. X train. X train is X simply is is telling us to go to X. Whenever you are talking about X, we are talking about the features. So we are talking about Y, we are talking about the what? Level. Exactly all the targets. So these features so say we've already assigned X train, and I told you that you are taking 80%. So as you can tell me, 80% of 160, what's the value of 80% of 150? How many that is 120? That's why we're having that one. That's why we're having that one. 80% of 150 is 120. So that's using a simple length function. Okay. Okay. So what, let's take out the length of S test. If you can tell me the length of S test before we try it. If you can tell me the length of the S test before we try it. Do they have any? No, no. The, I'm not talking about the percentage. In actual value, like 30, yeah, it's 30. Because if one is one page, the other one, the remaining to make it 50. So once I press it around, they are the moving 30. <laughs> you see that these codes are actually simpler than the one that does so. It's more understandable. Okay. So let's make the other imports that we need now. You see, we are using what inline importing. What are we using? Inline importing. Under normal circumstances, we are supposed to make all the imports before we start, isn't it? So check this out so that you see there are too many ways you can use to get into what you want. Okay. So I'm going to put this. So what am I importing? Class, who can tell me what I'm importing from what I just wrote now? Good. Because we're using support vector machine, isn't it? So that's the model, that's the algorithm we want to use. We want to import it. You understand? Like I told you before, people have written this model, isn't it? And kept it somewhere for you. So that once you attach it to this data, it will run the algorithm and get you the classification. Very simple. So from sklearn dot support vector machine, please. I want this very particular class of model. Is that clear? And the name is what SVC. The name is what SVC. That's what we're going to do. Simply means support vector machine classification. You understand? Classifier. That's the classifier that you're going to use to classify based on the features of sepal length, sepal width, and uh, petal length and petal width. I want to classify into iris satosa, iris virginica, and iris color. You understand? That is the classifier you want to use. That is not the only classifier. You understand? But that is the one we want to use that is more effective. So once we've done this, let's classify class. Let's classify. It's like T classify. Let's classify. So I'm going to pick up this. I'm going to pick this up. Hey, I don't know why I keep doing this. Okay. So I just picked that up. Let's build our model. Let's build out our model. Let's build out our model. Class, we are building our model. What are we using to build our model? Who can tell me the classifier we want to use in building our model? The SVZ what? Classifier. That's the model. That's what we are using. That's what we are using to build out our model. The SVZ classifier. So we simply created a variable known as what? Model. But we're assigning the value what? SVC classifier, which is a more a function, a model that is already written. 
So we know that anytime we create a variable that represents our model, how do we actually affect the model? What's the keyword that we use? Dot what? Fit. Dot what? Even when we use link reg, immediately after saying, we say link reg dot fit. Once you say that dot fit, that's when you're performing your, uh, your, 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 your model is helping you to train the data. So I'm going to do this. So can you see this? Model dot fit. You understand? You're not using the data set that you've, you've worked on, which is the X train and what? Y train. You're fitting it to this model so that it will work on it. Okay. So the next thing will be to output all this. Okay, suppose I output this. This is what it's supposed to output. So I'm, go I'm supposed to score this. Please, who can tell me what score means? In scoring, you are simply going to tell us the accuracy of your classification. You understand? Was your accuracy, was it, for this, this uh, modeling, was it done so well? So model does score. That's what we are doing. So let's score. Wow. I'm having 1.0. Who can tell me the meaning of 1.0? Perfect. 100%. The one I have here in my, this thing is 0 0.9, blah, blah, blah. You understand? So it's not that perfect. But the one we're having there now is what? Perfect. Abia, am I missing a line? Six. Okay, him is having 0 0.96. Okay. You're still close. Who else is having 1.0? Okay. You are having. Who else? 1.0. Okay. But if you're having 0. Point something, I don't think it's high. I don't think it's bad. Class, are you listening? If you have 0 0.99, even here I have 0 0.93. You understand? Because your model can actually behave that way. So now, what am I going to do now? Class, who can tell me what this line of code is telling me now? Who can tell me what this line of code? This is. Are you listening to me now? This line of code is telling me now, for a given separate length of 4.8, separate width of 3.0, Petal length of 1.5 and petal width of 3.0. I should predict whether it's a Tosa, Virginica, or what? Or Vesicular. So let me do that round up pre pre prediction now. It's predicting R0. Who can tell me what R0 is? No, no. You can't say it's nothing. R0 is what? Okay. Setosa. Setosa is zero. <laughs> so it has already learned. It has been trained. Is predicting already. <laughs> this is so sweet. This is what you'll be doing with uh, deep learning as well. You'll be using it to predict. When we go for this competition, this is how you write it. It will predict. It's not, it's not as if it's something fancy that you're going to be doing. You write this line of code. Once it sees the data, make sure you are using the right data. And if the data is having problem, make sure you work on the data before you start feeding it to train. It has already started predicting. You understand? So I think our job is done. Our job is done, but I'm going to look at the last things that we are left here. Okay. So that is all. Uh, that is it. Uh, okay. That's about it. So let me check out this. So that's about it. We're almost done. If you got from where we started to where we are now, you're okay. Okay? So this is a complete checking out everything. Uh, model C dot fit we scored what we fitted. You understand? When we say model C dot fit, once you use fit, it means you started training your, your, your data, your model. Then after training your model, you scored it. You can see I scored I'm also getting awards now. 100%, isn't it? 1.0 simply represents 100%. Yeah. The, other, the other person that got 0 0.9 something. Do, do this regularization and also tell me what you got. Are you still getting, because here yeah, they also uh, got 0 0.93. But I got my own one. Somebody should try it out and see what it's getting. One again, but okay. So we are not having any problem. So we are regularizing as at SCVC C equal to one, 
and we're trying at also C equal to 10, so that we can see whether we can have any major variation. So if we also try at C equal to 10, I'm also getting one. So my, uh, my model is almost perfect. My model is almost perfect. So I'm gonna also try out the gamma, the kernel. Okay, please let me look, let me leave out regularization, gamma, and kernel for our next class. Please just get to your fitting. Once you will be able to fit, which is train your model and predict. Let's stop there. Is that, is that understood? Other things are advanced. We'll look at it some other time. Maybe after looking at uh, KNRS mean and uh, and deep learning, we'll now look at it. Okay, thank you. Remember, everything you want is in Christ Jesus. The smoothest way to success is by being a born again. See you when I see you. Thank you. Love you.